portfolio. And that's what I'm going to call it because there are no hinges. It's just like a six section folio. So I went ahead and did one uh, offline just to make sure that I was going to have enough clearance um, from each panel. So I am going to be using the Graphic 45 um, regular tags uh, for this project. We're going to have an upper flap, a lower flap with a pocket, and then we're going to have a base mounted pocket right here that's just big enough for our ephemera cards. Okay, so that is very simple. We're going to repeat that process five more times, a total of six, and um, no magnets for this project. So we're going to hold everything nice and neat with this pocket and the tag, just like so. Okay, so let me go over the measurements for you. And I, offline, I went ahead and added the pocket to the lower flap because I kept mixing up the top and bottom flaps. So um, the bottom flap is, it's four and a half inches tall and it's four and one eighth inch wide. Four and one eighth inch wide, four and a half inches tall. You're going to score a half inch on the bottom and that's your lower flap. You're going to add a two and a half inch pocket on top. So the pocket is going to be five and one eighth by two and a half, five and one eighth by two and a half. And you're going to score three sides to make this finished two by four and one eighth inch pocket. And you're going to do that six times. And in addition to that, we have a top flap. The top flap is four and one eighth by four and a half, four and one eighth by four and a half. So you're actually going to have 12 of these flaps. There's going to be one for the bottom and one for the top. The difference is the bottom will have this pocket and a single score. The top is going to have two scores. So you're going to score at half inch and five eighths, half inch and five eighths. So you have a little bit of a gusset here, I'm trying to adjust it so you can see it. There's a good uh, view of it because the ephemera cards, I, I made them into cards. So You've got, let me show you. So you've got a designer paper here, designer paper here, and a little element here. So this is actually quite bulky. So I went ahead and added that gusset so that closes nicely over the top. So the only difference between the top and the bottom is that extra score line here. And then you're gonna add a pocket to the bottom, okay? And all this will be in the cut list for you. And then there's one more pocket. And I don't know what I did with my, my, here they are. One more pocket that's going to go on the actual base right here onto the folio panel. So this is going to be the first thing you install. Then you're going to install the lower, which has the two and a two inch pocket on it like that. So this is going to be the thing that's going to actually go straight onto this. Then we're going to add a flap right here and a flap to the base. So I'll be right with you in just a second. I'm going to repeat those just one more time as we go. And uh, I apologize for having already installed that, but it's pretty straightforward. And then everything is just going to get repeated six times. So actually what I did was I added my pocket to the, to the bottom flap. Then I added my bottom flap to this pocket. Then I added the whole thing. And it actually was easier for me to keep everything lined up. So I'm going to continue to do that. So this is the base pocket, and then we've got a flap with a pocket on top. Okay, now I'm gonna install this thing as a unit. And it was just, instead of having to line it up each time I set it on the board, I gotta make sure I've got, yeah. I was just making sure I was doing it right side up. And, and I am. So you're only going to see me do one, and then I'm going to do the rest offline because they're all identical. And then we will get to actually decorating it. Okay. So this panel is four and a quarter. So this should be inset about an eighth of an inch. And that just gives us a little bit of room. Uh, oops, I think I'm too far over, yeah. A little bit of room between each one of the panels so there's no interference, okay? 
So again, we've got our, um, our base pocket here. Then we have a flap, then we have our two inch pocket, and now we're going to add um, the flap on top. And it's easy for me to tell the difference between the bottom and the top because there's an extra score line here and also the bottom one has a pocket on it. So before I had done that, I kept mixing them up and I was putting the extra gusset on the bottom. So I just went ahead and added the pocket to the other one and that makes it very easy to keep track of. So it's up to you. All right, so this goes directly on the base panel and I'm just looking to line it up with the, um, the pocket and the feature I've already installed. And I should know better than to try to install this without bringing it to me. So I'm flipping it over so I have a better view of the edge here. Okay, looks good. Okay, so I'll go over that one more time. We've got our top flap, the one with the extra gusset. We've got our um, lower flap with a two and a half inch pocket, two and two and four and one eighth finished. Then we've got another large pocket here, and that is the design that we're going to replicate all the way across. Okay. I'll be back after I've got all these installed and then we'll start decorating. Hey guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Yay! We, I've got all of these installed now. And um, what I went ahead and did was covered all six of my tags. And um, I used uh, this pattern um, as a unifying element across the six panels. Normally in a book, you open it up and you're looking at two. Um, in this case, when you open it up, you're gonna see all six. So I wanted to make sure there was something that unified everything. And this particular pattern um, has all the colors in it. So that'll allow me to do whatever I want on the rest of it. So I went ahead and covered all six of these. Um, again, these are regular tags and this pattern is from the 12 by 12, okay? So if you take one of your 12 by 12s, cut it in half at six and then cut, um, each one of those uh, six by 12s uh, into three uh, four inch sections, one 12 by 12 will cover all, all six of your tags. Okay, so that's um, a good start, right? Okay, so the next thing I decided to do, and I, I'm gonna have to keep doing this, I apologize, but it's just the way it's gonna work out, is I cut, um, this pattern comes in three different colors. And so I decided to do yellow, black, blue, and then to repeat that. <clears throat> so we'll have yellow, black, and blue, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do on the lower pockets. And again, you can see that this tag is gonna work with all of the colors. So I'm going to ink these and start laying them in. And then uh, I'll start cutting some more of the papers. Oh, I want to show you that I do, I did make cards by folds out of all of the, um, not all of them, but of ephemera cards. And they're in this top, in the large pocket. And one of the things I needed to do was cut down these ephemera cards just slightly. So when you get the ephemera cards, there's like a rounded corner and then there's usually a frame around it. Uh, that's a contrast. So I cut all that off and then I made my bifolds eight by six, eight by six, and they need to be six inches across to fit in the pocket. So you, if you want to have a nice even border around it, you will need to trim these down ever so slightly. And then they fit in this pocket and they fit quite snugly. So um, make sure that your bifold card is no wider than six. Part of the reason it's so snug is because there's designer paper on the inside and outside of this bifold. Oops, it was getting stuck on the um, the uh, score line down there. So they do fit, but they are kind of snug. Okay, so I think I decided yellow is gonna be first, yellow, black, blue. Do I care? I don't think it really matters as long as... No, nope, let's put yellow in the middle because these two are kind of the dark colors. Yeah, I'm gonna start blue, yellow, black. That's what I'm gonna do. I, and you could do whatever you want, but this is what I've decided to do. 
I hope everybody's doing well and I'm anxious to hear some feedback from you guys on this project. It's uh, it's different. <clears throat> I kind of like it. It's nice not to have to do a hinge. <laughs> oh, and I, I'll probably, when I'm done, I'll give you the overall dimensions when width and height. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of contrast here so I can see the edge of the pocket. Um, so you know how big this is. It's not much wider than an eight and a half inch album. In fact, it might not even be eight and a half inches, but it's gonna be taller, a little bit taller than eight and a half. It might be like eight and a half. Well, I'll tell you right now. So the width is, oh, I take it back. The width of the lid, which is the widest part is nine inches. So it's nine inches across. And then when it's all put together, I'll tell you what the height is. Okay, so we decided to do blue, yellow, and then black. You can really see that white core when it's uh, a black pattern and a, a black um, base. That white core really jumps out at you. Now I hadn't planned on putting magnets on these, but I noticed when I put this in because the pocket is so low, it tends to want to bow out because this is kind of heavy. So I may change my mind on that, just FYI. I was hoping I wouldn't use magnets in this, but again, that may change. Okay, this one's already inked. Is this one? <clears throat> and here's our last one black. And I'll kind of run it back by you as soon as I get the last piece down. So there you go. So there's our first panel all the way to the end. Okay. It's lovely, lovely. I can't remember, but I think I showed you. Maybe I didn't. So I was finishing up this side the last time we were together, and I had four of these, four of these labels. So I put one on. Yeah, see, I think I'm gonna have to use magnets. One on each end where it's gonna come together and then two across the back just to evenly distribute them. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And I do think I'm gonna to have to use magnets because the weight of this tag wants to pull it forward, but we'll see. I'm gonna put some more paper. I'm gonna put some more uh, paper. Uh, 
I'm trying to decide. I'm going to layer some paper in before I glue it down and see if the weight of the paper on this flap is going to help me at all. It may not. And if not, then we're just going to add magnets and I'll do that with you guys. But that's where we are right now. So I went across and then I'm going to open these all up. Inside each one of the pockets, um, I've already placed the bifold ephemera cards. I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. I just did that so I wouldn't misplace them or repurpose them and show those each one of those to you. So that's uh, one side and another. This is just fussy cut from the collection pack. A and B. And then this is also just fussy cut from a, a, this border page. Uh, that's cut out of one of the... Um, it's just a little piece of one of the 12 by 12s where they have attractions tickets and it says that and that's also from the 12 by 12 just from a scale perspective it seemed right okay inside out another fussy cut um, element and i think this came off one of the small ephemera cards that i used um, as a as an element on the on the outside of the tent i had some of the leftover frame parts and so i just fussy cut some of the flowers this is a graphic 45 um, die. I was playing with this earlier, trying to decide if I wanted to use that element in the outside of the tent, and I uh, decided not to. It was a little bit too tall to use. But you could use any element that you can cut apart just to add it to make it a little more interesting. And so the idea is um, this is just unifies it with the collection and the project. Here's your journaling space, and you would put a photograph over here and then have a little label or a little accent. Okay, so that's all six of the cards that go into the base pockets. Okay, I'm going to take a break, trim out paper, get it inked, and then this is going to go together so quickly. Be back soon. Okay, I've decided um, what I want to do for the top of the pocket, um, the base pocket here, is match the pocket down here. So this is going to be the pocket liner. So I'm going to have blue for blue, yellow for yellow, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting these down. Um, I believe that's one and three quarter inches. I just cut these in two inch uh, pieces so they'll slide into the pocket. Oops, ever so slightly. Now remember the top flap has a, um, a double score line, so make sure you don't get into your score line. Okay, so blue for blue, so it looks pretty when you, when you first open this flap, you've got this match, although there'll be something in the pocket anyway. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the yellow. So because of the way the patterns are coming together and the consistent uh, pocket design, ah, I hate it when I do that. This album is gonna go together so fast. The rest of this I don't care about because it's gonna be covered, but the edges actually show. I think I drank a little too much iced tea. Okay, verify yellow for yellow. Don't want to close that because it's still damp. And then a the black for black. for blue and I have decided I am going to put magnets I know you guys don't want to hear that but the um, flaps won't stay closed and though the one way to have solved that was to make this pocket deeper but if I made this pocket deeper um, I guess I could have done like a quarter inch deeper but that's it 
otherwise I'd wind up cutting this shorter. Um, and then you'd wind up with something less than a four by four and you know what, it'd be very difficult to get a photo on it. So that's kind of why it wound up being what it is. That was the, um, the process I was going through in my mind when I was deciding the size. The goal was to not have any of my flaps be smaller than four by four. So again, I could have done four and maybe a quarter. It would be very close. Um, and I honestly don't think that quarter inch would have made enough of a difference uh, to keep the, I think the only way um, this would have worked is if the pocket were half as deep as the tag. So it would have to be up to here. And then I think it would um, have enough structure to hold it. But right now, most of the weight of the tag is above the pocket and that's why it's wanting to fall forward. So it, anyways, that's probably more, more than you wanted to know about that, but that's what the thought process was and how I wound up with kind of a shallow pocket in the first place. It's inked. I can't remember. Okay, good. <laughs> Couldn't remember if I hit record. It's terrible. <clears throat> okay, so one of the nice things about putting um, a pocket liner slightly inside the pocket is it really does help uh, everything go in and out easier because it's not getting stuck on these two side flanges. So that's one of the reasons I like to do pockets this way. Some people don't tuck it into the pocket or some people put the designer paper down and then put the pocket on top of it. And then again, you have your flanges on the, on the upside of the designer paper. So you can snag every time you go to do your insert. If you do it this way, smooth, smooth sailing. And I don't know where I got that tip from, but I, I got it pretty early on. And I realized it's a little bit of a pain to slip it in the pocket, but it makes the pocket so much more usable when you're finished. Okay, so there we go. So that looks very nice. Now I'm going to start looking for my next design decision. Um, so I'll be back shortly. Okay. I made another decision. So this is a strip off the 12 by 12 collection pack and I'm gonna add it to the top of each one of these pockets. So when this top flap is closed, you're gonna see part of it. I haven't decided which side's gonna be up and which side's gonna be down. Um, so when you open it up, you're gonna see this, 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 and um, I'll still have to cover the back of this pocket, but I kind of like this strip and I think I'm gonna go this direction. Uh, so it's gonna be a little border on the top of the large pocket. So you're going to need to cut this strip off both of the 12 by 12s and then um, trim it to fit. And then of course these are four inches across. It's gonna go like so. I've already inked them, so I'm ready to lay these in. I like this project. I'm really having a good time putting it together. It's so different from what I normally do. So I hope you guys like it. I'm going to try to do a couple more folios, not this size, obviously, but a couple more folios more in line with like what I did for um, Sir Vagabond. So typically a three panel folio, a front, back and center. Might even be just a bifold, but we'll see. It's kind of fun to do projects that don't have hinges for a change. Just for something different. I know that the base pocket albums are the most common. 
Okay, now I'm missing one piece, and here it is. It looks, it looks good. I like it. It looks kind of elegant. I think the uh, border strips are really fun to work with. Okay, it's just one more step towards finishing this project. I'm going to go make a couple more design decisions. When I come back, we will put them in. It's a little too low. Right on. Okay. I'll be back soon. So here's what we have so far. Where to come? Back soon. Okay, I've made my next design decision. So on the lower flap pocket, we're just going to use the coordinating um, blue, uh, yellow, or gold, and black. But before we put these down, I've already trimmed them and inked them. We are going to go ahead and put those magnets in like I talked about. Um, like I said, I tried to avoid it, but the uh, weight of the tag is just too heavy. So let's go ahead and get started. So luckily, the way it's going to go together is the lower flap goes, that, uh, is that right? Mm, no, it goes like Nope. <laughs> the lower flap goes down first, the top flap goes over that. So I'm going to draw a quick reference line here on each one of them so I know, uh, you know, roughly where the magnet needs to go. So the line is right here. That's how far that top flap extends, so I know it, my magnet needs to be somewhere around there. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to get my fat tape going. And we're going to repeat this whole process six times. Okay, that's one. And then I'm going to put the opposing magnet here. I made the mistake of doing artificial nails, which I don't normally do. I, um, I normally just have long nails, but I was having particularly troublesome time after I went and did an expo and all the packing and unloading and setting up. At any rate, I did artificial nails. Boy, do I regret that. My nails are so weak and tender. Okay, now here's the trick um, you need to pay attention to. The top flap has that second score line, so you don't want to pull your flap tight down. You want to actually get that gusset to stand straight up, right angle to the base, and then press it into place. So don't pull it flat, push it so that it's at a right angle, and then marry it up for your magnet placement. Hopefully that all makes sense. And in fact, while I was talking about that, I thought, why not go ahead and put my cards in the pocket? Because that's really all we're trying to accommodate. So if I can accommodate my card, it should take, it should bring me right to where I need to be on my gusset. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the rest of these. I'm going to place my cards in the pocket. If you haven't made yours, that's fine. You just need to make sure that the gusset is right up, straight up and down. But I'm going to go ahead and stuff my pockets and then place the rest of these magnets. So you're going to do what I just did, but you're going to repeat that process five more times. Be back soon. Okay, I've got all my magnets in, so I'm ready to go ahead and start adding our uh, coordinating papers down here. So let's get started. And like I said, I'm disappointed I wasn't able to figure out how to make this a magnet-free folio, but it is what it is. It's more important um, to make sure the panels are large enough to get a photo on. Okay, good grief. It's time to clean my, my glue tip. There we 
go. This is going to slide slightly inside the pocket. There we go. I went ahead and burnished these uh, thoroughly before, while I was off camera, so that the tape backing would come off quickly. I miss my nails as my tool. <laughs> I'm constantly using them to take glue off and now that I don't have any, I struggle with it. Okay, that was just a little, little too much glue on that one. Oh, I'm really liking the way this is coming together. And it was easier to get my magnets down once I had my, um, my uh, ephemera cards inside. It just, it was very easy to locate the, the magnet. Okay, that's inked. I hope everybody's having a good year. I was so hopeful we were gonna be well past all this COVID stuff, but it looks like it's gonna linger a little bit longer. So far I've been able to dodge that bullet, but um, I'm ready to craft in a room with people, not just by myself. And maybe, I don't know, travel. <laughs> <laughs> do something besides go to the grocery store. All right. Yes, I'm liking the way this is coming together. I do say so myself. <clears throat> now, for those of you that aren't interested in building the box, I get that it's not for everybody and it's going to be, it is going to take up a fair amount of space. Um, you could also just use this flap design and make a four and a half by six and a half mini album with um, six pocket pages. And if you're interested in doing that, if I have enough paper, I'm going to try to make that anyway. But if I don't and you're interested in doing that, Send me a shout out on um, YouTube and I will give you a cut list for it, even if I don't build it. But essentially I would decorate the pages just the same, but I'll give you the measurements for the chipboard, the uh, spine, cover spine, and um, the hinge. And then next up is Jane's Memoirs. And then it won't be much longer, um, and the Graphic 45 pre-order stuff should come in. So I'd also like to get some feedback from you guys of the Graphic 45 new releases. Which one would you like to see first? I'm kind of, I'm torn. I like them all, but I think I like the Let It Be. Is that what it's called? I think it's called Let It Be. Um, that might be the first one, but uh, we'll see. We shall see. And then I like the DCE too. So the DCE, um, I hadn't started building albums when that was released the first time. So I've not worked with that paper. So I'm kind of anxious to do something with it. Okay, we're moving right along. This is our sixth and final panel. <laughs> <laughs> now let's hear something. I think it's my husband. He's piddling around on his Jeep. He's a Jeeper. Okay, so there we go. All right, so um, I'll go away, come back and make another design decision. But we got our magnets in, so we need to do a cover for each one of these. And then uh, on the inside, 
you still need to do all all the surfaces on the inside well less the pocket liner so we're moving right along be back soon guys okay i'm ready to lay down the designer choice for um the internal pocket so i'm going to use this and i'm going to use it across the board so um and the reason I chose this paper, just so you know, from a design perspective, just as I did on the on the front when we have this in the pocket, this is sort of a unifying um, pattern. It has all the colors in it. So does this. So when I went and looked at um, all the choices I had, I wanted to pick something that had all the colors in it. Now this almost has all the colors in it, and it does, but it's not very obvious. There's an outline of black, but otherwise, you know, it really, you don't see the black in the pattern. So that's why I chose this. So we've got the blue, the red, the green, uh, the gold, and obviously the black. So that's why I chose it. It's kind of a universal, has all the colors. So I trimmed all these and inked them while I was away. It is a slight color block, so there's a seam, a black um, seam. But because this um, this strip has black on it, if you're uncomfortable with that, you could just butt it right against it. Okay. So this is from the 12 by 12 pack. And I, I, this is also from the Patterns and Solids, and that is also the case here. This is from Patterns and Solids. I think I failed to mention that, mention that earlier. And then the strip, this decorative strip, is from 12 by 12 Collection Pack, um, the border sheet. And sometimes I call it the cut apart sheet, but I think y'all know what I mean. Okay, there we go. And you can see it's a continuous pattern, so I cut um, the first slice and then cut it into four and then I did the next one. So they're all going to be a continuous pattern as, it, as, as you come across. And I find that to be important in this particular design because you're going to see all of them at once. Um, it's not like a, a regular book where you only see uh, two pages at once. Okay, we've got two more. I need to get some ink in there. Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. I'm going to come back and get that ink before I put this down so I don't have to worry about smearing this. Okay, let's see if I can get a little ink in here. That's the one thing that's a little bit disappointing about the powder puffs is it's really hard to ink because the pad doesn't come out past this plastic. So you kind of have to struggle with it a little bit. Um, and because of its design, it means I'm going to wind up getting ink on the black as well. But it's better than having that white blurb sticking out. The other thing you can do is since it is black, put a little black marker on it. So it's not quite as obvious. There we go. I can look at that. Okay, so we've got these six in place. I hope you guys are happy with how it's coming together. I'm gonna take a break, line up a few more things, and uh, we'll get the rest of this put together. 
I'll be back soon, you guys. Okay, I went ahead and uh, trimmed out and inked um, the pattern that I chose for the top flap. And again, I'm kind of using the the process and the design uh, technique that I talked about earlier, where it's kind of incorporating all the colors, right? A little less the black, but um, it really has the gold, black, blue, um, and even the red here. So this is kind of the first place that we're, well, that's not entirely true. We've got some red in here, but we're introducing uh, red on the closed position. So now when you pull in these tags, you know, we see all the colors. Okay, let's go ahead and lay these down. And then once we do that, um, basically we've got to get the top and bottom of the insides done. So we're coming, we're moving right along, guys. Now, before we do the inside liners, it is your last chance to adjust um, and tweak the position of your magnets if, if required. Um, it'll be a little bit easier to see if you need to, if your flaps are laying down right or if they're drifting left or right, like so. Um, where you can see it's kind of hanging off. Um, you still can adjust this magnet so that it's straight, but once you get your colored paper on here, it's just visually so much easier to see if you're gonna need to make that adjustment. This is eight by eight. Eight by eight, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's the... The first time I'm using the 8x8. I think that's right. See, there we go. I love it. I'm going to add some charms to these. I got to run over and see Julie and get some uh, jump rings. I'm out. If you buy this collection, of course, she, she always gives you wonderful charms. And I am definitely going to decorate my tags with some charms because they're not touching each other. Um, the way the, the album goes together or the folio goes together, um, these aren't gonna rub against each other. So I feel comfortable using metal charms on our tags where inside the album, sometimes I'm a little reluctant to do that because the opposing page is gonna press into them. So oftentimes I, the way I use my charms would be on the spine where there's no risk of marring a photo. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> uh, also, I'm starting to get a little bit more active on Instagram. I actually put a photo out there today. I know I'm, I'm so behind. I'm so old. <laughs> I haven't really spent a lot of time investing in that platform, but I am going to, that's one of my New Year's resolutions is to spend a little more time on social media. Um, other social medias. Ooh, that looks a little shy. Luckily, I have several more to choose from. <laughs> it just looked a little too narrow. That one, too. That one looks right. That's weird. One of the things I... It's not that weird. One of the things I noticed about Graphic 45, and it's a little irksome, is that when you get the 8 by 8s and you put it in your trimmer and you trim off this white strip, you have actually less than eight inches. So when you're specifically cutting it in half, four by four, one of them winds up being a little bit shy. And that's kind of irritating, but what do you do? I still love Graphic 45. But that's also one of the reasons in the past you see that I'll make my flap four inches um, and not four and one eighth, um, because you can't really split these things perfectly in half. They do that on the 12 by 12 too, but it's just less obvious. Because it's very rare that you use exactly all of a 12 by 12. Okay. It's a little high. It's hard to scoot it when it's got a gusset up here because it just pulls the whole thing down and not the uh, not the designer paper. So there we go. Okay, when I come back, I'll have made the decisions for the top flap and the lower flap, and and then we're going to be done except for adding a couple of element of the uh, charms to um, the tags.
And then I'm going to go through my scraps, see what it looks like, and there's a good chance I'm going to go ahead and cover the back of these. And if I can, I'll probably do them in solids, just because it's easier to, to visualize putting a photo on it. Okay, that's it. Uh, be back soon with both the top and bottom inside flap designer paper choices ready, and then we'll finish this up. Bye. All right, everybody, we're in the home stretch. I chose the polka dot pattern from the 12 by 12 collection pack to finish these up. Um, I tried a, a variation of things, but I, I'm pretty happy with this. And I do think it makes for a nice mat around a four by or a three by three photo. So let's go ahead and get some ink. And we'll start to get these down. And again, this is your last chance to realign your magnets if required because we're going to cover them up, cover that last one up. And that is it. Um, the last thing is going to be, I'm going to be adding some charms. I couldn't find any jump rings, so I'm going to add some charms with some twine. Actually, I think it's waxed uh, threads, but um, that's the color, and I'm just going to add them on with a little bow. All right. And then if I've got enough paper left, I'm going to try to figure out, you know, if I can do another small project with this. Or if I want to go in and um, add some additional inserts or cover the back of the tags, handful of things that I can do. I have to make the tag decision before I add the, um, the charms. Um, otherwise, I have to undo the bow and redo it. So I'll make that decision before. I add my charms. So after I get this down, I think I'll make those decisions. And then the next time we get together, it will be the walkthrough for the project, which will be a little unusual because I'll have to keep sliding back and forth, but you guys will get the gist. I'm going to try to, um, well, I'm not going to try. I'm going to get some photos uh, put together that are front and side, um, which won't show up so well in the walkthrough, um, but I'll have photos of the project uh, sitting on a table so you can see what it looks like and I'll give you those overall dimensions. Like I said, the, the width is nine inches wide, so it's just a little bit wider than our normal eight and a half uh, album, but it is taller. I think it's gonna be, uh, I really don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine inches tall, maybe nine by nine. So again, not a whole lot bigger than an album. Okay, let's go ahead and get these on. I'm just gonna do the first one with you guys. You don't need to watch me put every single one down. And then, like I said, the next time we get together, I'll point out any embellishments that I've added. And if I've decided to go add additional inserts, I will also cover that in the walkthrough. Okay? All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys taking time to come on over to our channel and enjoy our tutorial. Um, if you haven't been to our shop, take a moment to go over there and do some browsing. Uh, we are taking pre-orders for both Stamperia new collection releases and Graphic 45. And they're due in uh, late February, early March, I think is what the current status is. Although we talked to Stamperia today and there's a chance those might be coming in a little bit sooner. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Next time we get together, it'll be the official walkthrough.